Financial Statement Trinity Problem 1 Tomato Corporation was started on 1-1 Year 1. During Year 1, the company experienced only the following. Earned cash revenues of $34,300, paid cash expenses of $15,100, and paid $3,400 cash dividend. Complete and calculate the following. Record events using the accounting equation. Prepare the financial statement trinity. This question is very straightforward because we only have three transactions to focus on. However, we do still have a lot of stuff to do. So the first thing it's asking us to do is record the events using the accounting equation. So our accounting equation, as we know, assets equals liabilities plus equity. Now this is a corporation, it's tomato corporation. Of course, a corporation is going to have more than, more than three transactions during the year. The idea here is we're just going to keep it simple to go through everything. So let's just go through the three transactions in order, showing how they, how they affect the accounting equation, also noting what accounts are affected. Now, the accounting equation approach that I use in my videos under the basics videos, this is what I like to refer to as the horizontal analysis. Understanding the accounting equation helps you better understand the financial statements, which for many of you out there that are taking accounting classes, the purpose of you taking financial accounting or any accounting class is to understand how to navigate and read and understand the various financial statements. So the first transaction, A, earned cash revenues of $34,300. So going through assets, any assets affected here? Yes. We have an increase in cash of $34,300. So we'll put that number. And I'm going to use um, parentheses for negatives if we have anything that goes negative. Well, that's the only asset that's affected. Any liabilities here? No. So no liabilities. What about in the equity? We have revenues. Revenues go under equity, and specifically they go under retained earnings, the retained earnings side of the corporation. Now, I'm just going to refer to anything that goes under retained earnings for this problem under retained earnings, but I will note that it is going to be considered, I'll put on the side here, that it will be a revenue. It will be a revenue. So our, our retained earnings amount goes up by $34,300 and our equation balances. Okay, B, our next transaction, paid cash expenses of $15,100. Any effect to assets? Yes, cash goes down by $15,100. Again, it's assumed that if there's nothing after the amount, it's cash and we're told it's paid cash expenses. Any liabilities? No. What about equity? Yes, we have retained earnings. Retained earnings are going to go down by $15,100 because expenses go up by $15,100. So we keep note of that. And our equation balances. C, pay $3,400 cash dividend. Okay, cash goes down by $3,400. What about liabilities? No effect. And then what about equity? Well, remember, equity, which for a corporation, we have stockholders' equity, is broken into two parts, paid in capital and the retained earnings side. And that's why I've noted earlier that retained earnings is the account affected, the item affected, I should say. Retained earnings is affected, and I specifically put which ones. Now, remember, whenever you're dealing with any type of equity, there's an acronym, WIRE, W I. RE withdraws investments revenue expenses for paid in capital the I for investments goes there and then everything else the W the R and the E go under retained earnings the R and E are for revenue expenses so net income net loss the W is for withdraws for a corporation that's known as a dividend dividends reduce retained earnings and we have a cash dividend here of $3,400 so we're going to reduce retained earnings by $3,400 and we're going to note the type of account is cash dividends. All right, so we've gone through all three transactions. So as you can see, in each of them, they balance. The accounting equation balances, boom. Really important that we do that. The ending balance in cash this is going to be important for later on. Our ending balance in cash is $15,800. Liabilities, zero. And retained earnings, we have a balance of $15,800. Look at that. Hey, even in the end, it balances. See that? It balances. 
Now that information is going to be very important because we're about to do the next parts of the question. We're going to look, go through the Trinity. The financial statement Trinity, we're going to focus on the income statement, the balance sheet, and the statement of changes to stockholders' equity since it's a corporation. So we have three specific statements that we're going through. So these are the Trinity, these three statements. If you're ever asked for the financial statement Trinity, these are the three statements. The statement of cash flows is outside, outside of the Trinity. And that is another statement to focus on. So statement of changes to, I'll just put SE, stockholders equity. All right, let's go through the income statement. The income statement formula is simple. It's just revenues minus expenses equals net income if it's positive or net loss if it's negative. Now, of course, within revenues and expenses, we break down different groups. You'll have sales revenue, interest revenue, different types. Expenses, you'll have different types of expenses. You'll have uh, so salaries expense, cost of goods sold, operating expenses, so many different types, depreciation expense, income tax expense. Here in this problem, because we only have one revenue, one expense, and A and B, we're just going to keep it simple. So the revenue here, revenues here, we have $34,300 in A minus the expenses, which we had in B, $15,100. And that gives us net income of $19,200. Boom. Income statement done. Now, of course, as many of you know in this problem, you're like, wow, this is like the most simple version of an income statement I've ever seen. Yes. The idea here is that this problem is meant to be extremely simple. Only three transactions. I'm keeping it as basic as I can to get you to understand, just from a broad understanding point, what exactly an income statement is, a balance sheet statement of changes to stock or equity from a very, very, very simplistic standpoint. Then you take more uh, complex issues and you add them in. More complex items and you add them in. So this is kind of like the baseline, the bare bones of understanding the financial statements. Next, we have the balance sheet, which arguably, and different people will say different things, I think the balance sheet is the most important of all the financial statements. And the reason why is because if you're looking at these financial statements, yes, the balance sheet just provides a snapshot while the other statements provide a, a period of time and they show you change. But one thing is that there's a lot of information provided in the balance sheet that the other ones don't have in terms of the detail goes into, lots of footnotes and other things. So a balance sheet, the accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity or stockholder's equity, that's the purpose of the balance sheet, a snapshot on that date. If you took a picture of what the assets, liabilities, and uh, equity are on that date. So the idea is that on the left side of the balance sheet, we have the assets. On the right side, we're going to have the liabilities. And we're going to have the stockholder's equity. And because if the reason it's called balance sheet is it follows the balancing equation, right? The accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus owner, owner's equity or stockholder's equity. So on the left side must equal, the sum of the left side, left side must equal the sum of the right side. Do we have any assets here? We'll look back to our accounting equation we did earlier. Yes, we have one account assets, that was cash. Our cash balance at the end, look, we already did this. Easy, right? Boom, $15,800. Liabilities, any liabilities here? No, no liability. So I'm just going to put a zero under liabilities, not even put an account. Stockholders equity. Now, this is a corporation. Every corporation must have at least some stock. We're going to go ahead and every corporation has to have at least common stock. Can have preferred stock, but has to at least have common stock. So we're going to note common stock. Now, yes, this corporation likely has a balance in common stock. The problem is that I'm keeping this, this this problem simple, so I didn't give you that information. So we're just going to say common stock, because we're only looking at A, B, and C, these three transactions, is zero. But of course, in real practice, that would have a balance. The other thing we have is retained earnings. Retained earnings. And by the way, we're doing this balance sheet at the end of our period of time after these three transactions, and we determine that our retained earnings it's $15,800. Put a little line here for the statement of stockholders equity. So if we sum up everything, asset side, 15800 
Liabilities are zero. Stockholders' equity equals 15,800. So the total, 15,800 equals 15,800. The reason it's called balance sheet. Does the left equal the right? Yes. So that balances. So now we go over to the statement of change to stockholders' equity, our last one. The idea is that we're going to show the change from beginning to ending balance and how it got there. So that $15,800 balance in stockholders' equity, we're going to show how we got from the beginning balance to the ending balance of that amount. We break it up into our paid in capital and our retained earnings side, as we did earlier when I showed you that stockholders' equity is broken into those two parts. We're going to start with beginning common stock, which was zero. Again, just based on the information given to us. Did we have any increase in common stock? So I'll put a plus common stock. No, there was no change. So the ending common stock, ending common stock balance is still zero. So that portion of the statement of changes is complete. Now we go to our retained earnings. So our beginning, I'm going to abbreviate retained earnings, RE, beginning retained earnings. We're not given a balance, so zero. We did have net income. Our net income, which comes from our income statement, so we can bring that over, $19,200. We just calculated that on the income statement. 19200 We increase retained earnings by that amount. Minus our dividends. So we did have dividends or cash dividends in C of 3400 So we're going to subtract away 3400 And that's going to give us our ending retained earnings balance of 15800 and then finally, we also have to put our ending stockholders' equity balance, which in this problem is $15,800. So the idea here is that you prepare these statements in order, income statement, balance sheet, statement of changes to stockholders' equity. Some people do the balance sheet and statement of changes to stockholders' equity in a different order. I like to do it like this. The income statement needs to be prepared first because you bring over that balance. Also, if you're doing a statement of cash flows, always do the balance sheet before the statement of cash flows because the idea of a statement of cash flows is you're showing the change on the balance sheet in cash. So that's really what's going on here. And here's all this information. Again, meant to be very simple, just to show you the bare bones of what the financial statements are and how things flow onto the various financial statements.